Bro, what the fuck is Castovia? I dope my gun for an AK as a true gob thing naturally does. It wasn't a bunch of Russians but Al Katala. I can tell because I know a little Russian and these guys are talking gibberish. Also known as spaghetti language. We make our way downtown shooting ISIS wankers and trying really hard not to hit civilians who are making this really fucking difficult, not gonna lie. We can't help him in time and so Bossman eats the fucking dude. Actually, since Alex likes to travel to second and third world countries so much, we can call him bold and bankrupt. CIA, huh? You like Semichki? I really like Semichki. Just kidding, I don't have any. Look at all these awesome dudes denazifying and liberating the population. So cool! We finally escaped the Russians by LARPing as a Jew from New York. We found their gaff and so we do a sticky bricky extended car warranty inspection. Ooh, an AK. Ooh, bigger AK. Did you just throw a grenade in my face, you little prick? The locals have a specific view of this situation and possibly malicious intentions given all those AKs they're waving around. Damn, they had to shoot the kid off screen? Cringe. We hop on the cameras to direct the ambassador to safety cause we need his keycard to get our mewing asses out of here. And he's that beautiful. Adir gives us his Kyber Pass sniper rifle which is absolutely hideous boje moi. I tried to find the suka but only proved that I would die in World War 3 because I behave like a fucking dodo in a combat environment. We find sharp tools around the house so we come to the only conclusion there is and start acting like a smelly rat and nibble at his feet. We achieve great success by not dying and getting out of the town and bleeding that's a lot of heroin. We get to the truck but we get kidnapped by the Albanian Mafia. We wake up from a silly little nap after being EP for an undisclosed amount of time. I wonder how much irreversible respiratory damage we have undertaken. Bossman and Gaz show up and I mean they're clearly disappointed we just woke up. A couple of more minutes of unconsciousness and somebody would have had their butthole molested. I was referring to Farah, why are you looking at me Gaz? Farah starts cursing her brother's name but falls victim to the irreversible respiratory damage. Anyway, we get evacuated from the field and everyone is chatting about how Hadir is the one who stole the gas. While they're busy yapping, I just wanna ask something. So I recently played both campaigns again, on real as cause I was feeling cheeky, and I noticed a discrepancy. Why does gas look like this in every cutscene? Like no joke, half the time when you're getting into character from a cutscene as gas is just <laughs> Hadir bravely ran away to join ISIS, which wouldn't be as bad in itself, but he took the remaining chemical weapons with him, which turns this situation into a slippery slope. We play as Gaz and get our butt cheeks airlifted into some ISIS stronghold or whatever. Wasn't really paying attention at the briefing, I was too busy inhaling paprika. It's one of them house clearing at night missions I'm pretty sure everybody likes, so it's good. I die immediately cause I'm built different, and by different I mean I'm a fucking illiterate monkey. We shoot a scared woman instinctively defending her child. Now, now, we can't be ordering a 10 strafing runs on third world orphanages if they're all empty now, can we? God damn, I love me some war crimes. Wish I had a PS5 so I could play hill divers with my mates. We keep going and a marine shoots a dog, which is such a scummy move, bro stole my kill, like, it's not even funny. An AK don't mind if I do. I die again because of course I do. We clear the gap but find no sign of neither the wolf nor Hadir. We find out from the locals where they went so we go there. Bro what the peach jets is this? Do these guys think they're Colin Furs or something? Got all their fucking secret bunkers and shit. We switch to bold and bankrupt and hop on down inside but then a big boom happens and we are cut off from everyone else. Bro what kind of urot puts a sight on a shotgun? Especially such an ugly one. It's like turning fine rifle into this abomination, there's no point to it. Well regardless we dash through the caves popping hipsters like this is GTA and then I pick up an AK. I like AKs. I proceed to defiantly stand in front of a fortified MG position and die valiantly. See, I would be a perfect helldiver. This is my appeal to the European Union to fund me a PlayStation 5. It will be a worthy investment, trust me. We flank the MG and clap some terrorist cheeks and oopsie, that's my ally. I will say again one last time, I would be a perfect helldiver. Anyway, we get separated because jumping on wooden boards that are like 200 years old and don't even know the concept of maintenance didn't appear to be such a good idea. Despite this, we keep going and keep trolling the locals by burning them alive. They didn't take to this very kindly and then tried to turn me into a shashlik. It's poetic how they fight fire with more fire. Just so happens that the fire began spreading all over the 200 year old wooden bars that don't even know the concept of maintenance. So I make a desperate attempt to climb my way out of the inferno. I almost die but Farah saves my clumsy ass in a cutscene so I guess we're good. We find a wolf with a bomb strapped to him on a camera. 
Either his friends pranked him or he's live streaming on Instagram to fund this terrorist organization. We shoot the bozo because who wouldn't? But then we start defusing the bomb, which is a little confusing. Like, what's the point if he's dead anyway? Like, why bother risking our lives? Are we doing it because the mines might collapse? Even though it resists all the gunfire, explosions, grenades and an underground wildfire? Sure, whatever. We go back to base and celebrate this great victory by bonding over dinner like a family. Yeah, good job weirdos, we're gonna get Khadir next. Oi Laswell, you forgot one tiny minute detail. Shee bro, my bad. Uh, yeah, so High Command said Farah's freedom fighters are terrorists now. The fuck you mean, no, uh? God, shut your bitch ass up, she didn't even say that. What you mean I'm a terrorist now? I'm literally your ally. Yeah, I don't care, cope harder. Told my troops to shoot your people now and everything. No, that was not very cash money of you. Laswell, why you do this? Bro, there's nothing we can do. She thinks she's Napoleon Bonaparte. Nah, bro, screw this. In true bold and bankrupt fashion, I'm dumping you inferior soy westoys and I'm joining the Chad goat herders. You got to be trolling. We've been trolling ever since this retard started playing this game, it's nothing new. We get a flashback to 10 years ago. We are playing as Farah and we are in Gulag. We chat with our brother who's managed to obtain some mysterious keys and he chucks them to us. The Albanian comes over to pay us a lovely visit. We go to a sketchy room where he starts interrogating us about who Commander Karim is. Spoiler, Farah is Karim, that's literally her surname, but we keep telling him Karim is dead. The Albanian gives us something to drink and then gives one of our cellmates a free plastic surgery involving opening up the brain to some additional ventilation to help her cool down faster in this hot country. After all that, he gives us something to eat. Psych! He then reveals he knew we were Karim all along. If that's the case, why did he bother asking us earlier? He then asks about the missing key, but as always I lie because I think I'm Darth Vader. This kinky ass Albania starts choking me, but then an explosion happens or whatever and he leaves. I escape my cell and take out a couple guard, and then make my way to our cellmates and freedom. The key, as it turns out, opens up a gun locker, which is convenient. We start a revolt in the gulag, popping Russians left, right and center, we eventually find ourselves at the mercy of our enemy. However, Postman comes in clutch to save our clumsy asses. So that's how they met, huh? Nice. We go back to present day and Bosman is chatting with Laswell about their next mission. Basically Hadir and ISIS brought the gas to Russia and can you guess what they're gonna do with it? Yeah, so we had a plan to go there and stop these bozos from killing innocent people. Now, if they targeted the Kremlin that would be a different story, but you know, ISIS loves to kill everyone they don't like except the people responsible for the bad things going on in their country, so you know. We go to Petrograd. Our target is the Butcher, aka that Chad from the embassy that likes shooting kids. I grab myself a good because who wouldn't am I right? We go to politely introduce ourselves to ISIS. After that we catch the butcher spitting cap so we interrupt him but then he starts running. We chase after him and in true terrorist fashion he kills every innocent person he can. I guess he just can't help himself can he? I know I wouldn't be able to if I had the option to shoot every single thing that moves. We finally catch the Urod when comrade Nikolai runs over the goober. It's hard to run with concussion, no? We hit him in a van and then hold off the onslaught of terrorists trying to get us to act in a funny internet video that will definitely end up on Instagram. We traverse to a super sneaky location where we ask some kind of violent questions regarding the location of both Hadir and the gas. He does appear to be physically resistant so we do the old kid and wife strat, the meta of interrogation. Postman gives us a gun and we wave it around maliciously. I even pull the trigger but it's empty so we start loading. The butcher suddenly has a change of heart and tells us everything we need to know. I pop one into his head and we leave. We go to... Moldova. I wasn't expecting that. A surprise to be sure, but a welcome one. We scout the area where Kadir might be and come up with a couple of possible locations. We come on down and utilize the darkness to our advantage. We infiltrate some gaff and clear it, but no Kadir. Instead, we find a hostage who had maybe a punch or two too many. We then go to a pool and find the suppressed Kalashnikov, which is a dream come true. It's like the devs knew I would love to have a silenced AK for this mission. Anyway, we clear the place again. Again, find no Hadir. Instead, we find the exact same guy we were just after freeing. Like, come on bro, the devs really couldn't be bothered to make a few extra models. Anyway, we go to the last place we got a search, aka the church, and unfortunately I get my clumsy ears spotted, so the situation gets a little tense. Regardless, we achieve great success by finding yet another clone, but this time he actually knows something. 
We go to the nearby mansion palace thing and immediately get myself killed. We achieve more progress with the second attempt because we get killed inside the building this time. Third time's the charm though and after massacring every bot I encountered we go up to the floor the clone hostage was yapping about and we find Hadir. He claims to have found the factory that makes the chemicals the Russians owe so enjoy using in Urzikstan. However, we ourselves get found by the Russians and all trolling breaks loose as we bravely run away from the helicopters. We escape via dodgy sewer tunnel, hip hip hooray I guess. We go to Urzikstan and we chat with Farah about the supposed chemical weapons factory that Hadir located. We convince her to help us blow this badabimbozo up into the stratosphere. We go to... Georgia. That's the last place a Russian would want to plant a weapons factory. Maybe it's secret or something, cause I find it hard to believe the locals would not hang every single Russian in that place upside down by his testicles. Anyway, we begin on all out assault and we play as bold and morally bankrupt. Bro, why would you ever bring this diabolical sniper rifle? Ah uh, yes, of course, ditching the gun for an AK. Oh damn, this is like a proper battle and everything. I wonder what the Georgians think of Westerners, Arabs and the Russians shooting each other in their country. We make our way up to the mountain utilizing every go-go gadget at our disposal. We got like the funny laser and an APC as mobile cover. It does blow up eventually though, cause we can't have shit. We break into the facility itself though. We split up to achieve different objectives. The fight inside was equally as fierce as the one outside. And we die a couple times. We meet up with Nikolai who gives us remote explosives. We continue on and achieve more war crimes via burning our enemies alive. We then come across the juggernaut and uh, well, you know what, I'll just show you what happened. Yeah, so that was fun. He was basically the last of the resistance bold and bankrupt encounters. We make our way to the furnace and I haven't got a clue what a furnace does in a Geneva violations factory. Maybe that's their super smelter where they turn all the cobble into stone or something, I don't know. We do have a teeny tiny hindrance though, i.e. the detonator is absolutely screwed. The conversation went as follows. No oh, bled, fine, I guess I'll have to sacrifice my silly ass. Nah. -uh. Fuck you mean no uh, uh I wanna do it no let me do it 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 fine take this and piss off We switch it up and now we play as gas we start blasting bozos Did you just fucking smack me the disrespect Jesus this perspective wasn't nearly as long as Bold and Bankrupt's and we reached the pipelines in no time. Or maybe that's their item sorter, I don't know. We then switch over to Farah who sneaked aboard the Albanian's helicopter. We do a sneaky bricky and mold the guy with a knife. Oi mate, have you got a pound I required for the London boss ya bum -bucklot? We then yeet him off the heli, he's good. Subscribe to Life of Boris and lick some salt.